Senator from Wyoming is recognized. Well, thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, within the last 20 minutes, I've heard on the floor uh, comments about the sequester. Uh, uh, a previous speaker on the Democrat side of the aisle said that the sequester was hurting small business and said that the sequester was causing uh, economic uncertainty. Another senator on the other side of the aisle make reference to the Washington Post. Well, Mr. President, I would uh, draw the attention of, the, of this body to the Washington Post this morning. Front page story, Washington Post, today, Thursday, March 21st. Health care uncertainty weighs down small firms. Not the sequester, uncertainty about the health care law. Requirements under the 2010 law so confusion, fear among businesses. That is the problem that's driving the fear and the anxiety and the lack of new business starts and the failure to expand businesses. When one continues in this, in this article, there's a small business owner in, uh, of an air conditioning uh, firm in Richmond. He says, quote, in speaking to them, I am convinced, he's talking about other customers, he's talking about other businesses, I am convinced that the primary reason we aren't seeing a robust economic recovery is the uncertainty and costs associated with this health care law. Looming health care changes hold back small businesses. They go on another uh, pulled out area. It's already hard out there right now. This may be this, the health care law may be the, the straw that breaks the camel's back. Not the sequester, not the made-up confusion by the Democrats. It is the health care law that is hurting our economy, and even the Federal Reserve in their, blue book, in their beige book said so this past month. So, Mr. President, I rise today to speak on the fiscal year 2014 budget and the choice that we face other whether we are going to grow the economy or just grow government bureaucracy. Mr. President, when I travel home to Wyoming, as I did last weekend and will again this weekend, I hear from hardworking American taxpayers that they do not believe Washington is spending their tax dollars wisely. They think Washington has become far too inefficient, ineffective, and unaccountable. And it's not just the people in Wyoming I'm hearing it from, Mr. President. You know, according to Gallup, Americans across the country estimate that the federal government wastes 51 cents of every dollar that it spends. More than half of all taxpayer dollars are wasted, and that's what the American people believe. So when people look at the federal budget and the debate that we're having today in the Senate, it's no wonder that they're concerned. They want to know how this budget's going to affect them and their quality of life. Looking at the Democrat budget, I think the American people have every reason to be skeptical and every reason to be concerned. This budget is just more of the same. More taxes, more spending, and more debt. And it never reaches balance. Not this year, not 10 years from now, not ever. This budget does far too little to heal our ailing economy and far too much to expand Washington bureaucracy. The budget that the Democrats have put forward would increase taxes by a trillion dollars. That's on top of the trillion dollars in tax increases in the President's health care law. It's also on top of the tax hikes that the President demanded in the January deal to avoid the fiscal cliff. Now, in contrast, the Republican plan from the House Budget Committee will not increase taxes at all. The Democrats' budget will also rack up $7.3 trillion in new debt over the next decade. Since President Obama took office four years ago, he has added more than $6 trillion to our national debt. For four years, he's run budget deficits over a trillion dollars, each and every one of those four years. Now Senate Democrats want to throw good money after bad and add another $7 trillion on top of that. The President has simply wasted too much of the American taxpayers' money. The American people have been stuck with an enormous bill, Mr. President, as well as an anemic economy and economic growth, which has been very slow. The American people think more than half of all Washington spending is wasted, and the Democrats can't find a single dollar that they think should be saved. Democrats actually want to increase Washington spending by another $645 billion. This budget would spend $46 trillion over the next 10 years. Apparently, President Obama thinks that the only things that need to be cut from our budget are White House tours. Well, Republicans and the American people know that there is a lot more that we could be cutting. 
taxes are demanding, taxpayers are demanding that Washington finally get serious about our budget and stop the political games and the political gimmicks. It's time for Washington to do what families across the country have always had to do, live within their means. Democrats still don't seem to get it. They continue to insist that the rules don't apply to Washington and that they should not be held accountable for their spending choices. Like their other failed policies of the past few years, the Democrats' plan is very much a statement of their priorities. It does nothing to stop the overregulation that, that is destroying jobs, nothing to stop the overregulation that is strangling our economy. It protects failing government programs from reform. It does nothing to preserve and protect Medicare and Social Security for future generations. It just spends more money so that Washington Democrats don't have to make a single tough choice. They have made their, their priorities clear, but they are the wrong priorities for America. Republicans have offered a plan that starts to rein in Washington's spending and getting it back in line with revenue. That's what we should be doing. With a debt of more than $16 trillion, it's, it is why and it is way beyond the time to balance the budget. We need to finally start to ease the burden of that debt on future generations. We need to reduce our obligations to countries like China. We need budget reforms that help to grow our economy and create jobs. Or we can go in the opposite direction, the democratic way. The Democrat budget never balances. It never even comes close to balanced. The smallest deficit it ever achieves would be uh, more than $400 billion in 2016, and then the deficit starts to climb again. It continues Washington's unrestrained borrowing and spending and continues to the damage four years of failed Democrat priorities have done to our economy. Now, according to one independent analysis, the Democrats' budget would cost America 853,000 jobs. Total economic output would be $1.4 trillion less because of this budget. Private investment would be less per year. And as bad as this budget is, at least we finally have a Democrat budget to debate. This is the first time in four years the Democrats have bothered to even offer a budget in the Senate. President Obama has not even submitted a budget at all yet. Where's the President's budget? It was due on February 4th. Now the White House says that they will finally produce a budget well, maybe sometime in April. Well, that's more than two months late. So what we have to work with here is an unserious budget plan written by Senate Democrats. It's inadequate to the challenges that we face as a country. It is out of touch with what the American people want. And it is a slap in the face to the hardworking taxpayers who will have to pay for it. If President Obama truly believes we need to take a balanced approach to our budget, he should publicly oppose this wildly unbalanced budget that harms America. We need a serious budget, Mr. President, one that grows the economy, not government bureaucracy. Thank you, Mr. President. I yield the floor.